So a judge threatened me with contempt of court the other day. This is that full long story. Now, Ariana Lene Zolziak, she's taken some of the prettiest mugshots I've ever seen. Don't you agree? I got these photos a little while ago, and ironically, the day I sit down to film this story, it's her birthday. Today is Friday, October 18th. She is now 23 years old. And hopefully whenever Ariana's DUI case rolls around, we will be able to film it. We will be able to watch it. Her case is titled The State of Georgia versus Ariana Lee Zolziak. It's in the Foresight State Court in Georgia. This is what her case is about. According to the traffic citation, Ariana operated a motor vehicle while under the influence of alcohol to the extent that she was less safe to drive around 1 a.m. on August 13th, 2022, more than two years ago. She was driving a black Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. Ariana is listed as a five foot tall, three inch, 130 pound white female, and she's still waiting for her day in court, apparently more than two years later. Now that G-Wagon may have belonged to her sister. Police are saying that Ariana made an erratic and improper lane change, and she caused a collision at Peachtree Parkway over Highway 400. Ariana tried to turn right onto Peachtree from the left-hand turn lane in front of another vehicle and hit another man's vehicle. Reporting deputy T.L. Bateson wrote, I made contact with the driver of the Mercedes, Ariana Zolziak. That's the name that's listed there. She advised me that she made a right turn onto Peachtree Parkway and collided with the other vehicle. I could smell a slight odor of alcoholic beverage coming from her breath as she spoke to me. She denied consuming any alcoholic beverages. I asked Ariana to come to the front of my patrol car. Ariana advised me that she was 20 years old. I asked Ariana if she had consumed any alcoholic beverages. She stated no. I advised her I could smell the odor of alcoholic beverage on her breath. She stated that the odor was possibly coming from her clothing. Ariana stated that she had smoked a THC vape pen the night before, but did not drink. I conducted field sobriety evaluations with Ariana and observed signs of impairment. I observed that she had a noticeable sway during the evaluations. Sergeant Pittman conducted an HGN evaluation with Ariana. He advised me that he observed four out of six clues. I asked Ariana to provide a breath sample to the preliminary breath test she refused. I determined that Ariana was impaired by alcohol to the extent that she was less safe to drive. I advised her she was under arrest for DUI and placed her into handcuffs. I read Ariana her implied consent notice for suspects under the age of 21 and asked for consent to test her blood. She said yes. I conducted a search of her vehicle and located a black vape pen in her purse. The vape cartridge contained a brown colored liquid and smelled like marijuana. I seized the vape cartridge and submitted it into evidence at the South Precinct evidence lockers for testing. I completed a GBI submission form for the THC vape cartridge. I transported Ariana to the Forsyth County Jail and turned her over to the jail deputies. While at the jail, Ariana stated that she no longer wanted to consent to the blood test. I read her implied consent notice for suspects under the age of 21 and asked for consent to test her blood. She said no. They completed a certain form. She was served with the form. She was notified of her suspension. Ariana signed the form and this deputy says I seized her driver's license. Ariana was cited for DUI, improper erratic lane change, and underage consumption of alcohol. Now I'm thanking God for these officers that they were there and they got an unsafe driver off the road. And this body cam footage should be a doozy to watch when cops are allowed to release it to me. That's because Ariana is part of a famous family that we've spent the better part of 2023 and 2024 watching 15 videos I've created about this family so far, which show the antics of her famous parents who have appeared in countless body cam videos because they keep calling the police to their Georgia mansion. <laughs> Oh, did you just see that? Guys, here's the thing. 
He's being ridiculous and you know he's being petty. Get out of my face. Out of my car. This is my vehicle and you have the other two. It is. It's in my name embryo. You should listen. It's a joint medical asset. Guys. It's a joint medical asset. We're on we're on the verge of like creating a situation we don't need to. Yeah, oh. This is ridiculous. But whatever. Give myself back, Tess. Stop you taking my belongings. All of your you took all of my purses just now. These are joint marital no, assets. They're not. They're not. Okay. It's okay. An officer okay. just he worked for the, the Go. You need Go. to understand Go. these are joint marital assets. You're doing you punish me. You're doing everything. it to sell me. You're doing all of it. These At, purses no. are not from you. Just the great ones from Thank from you. Lee. Thank so that are from. So I'm gonna have to let them really hear this one. Would you like to speak to a lawyer about what joint marital assets are? I have one on the Here, phone. It's okay. I have a lawyer. Thank you. I have one. I have one. I have one. Thank you. I have one. Thank you, sir. I, I tried. Yeah, I tried. Joint marital assets are assets that need in Sure. Right. I explained. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. That the only thing that make her more upset. I don't care. I'll make it all again. Just ignore it. Yeah. You're in the army. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's trying to get a rise right now, so. How much more stuff do you got that you want to take? I want to just get my bag so my pocket is laundry. Okay, okay. Then if you do that, we'll wait. Okay. And load it up in the car yeah. as she continues to take them out of the house. Oh, well, I'll get breaking that. things yeah, now. No, that's wrong. Okay. Join the parents the last three years. You can watch all of those videos at the link below to the entire playlist. Yes, as those of you who know who Ariana is or may have guessed, her famous parents are Croy Bierman and Kimberly Zolziak. Well, Croy at least adopted Ariana when she was a young girl, her and her sister. After Croy met Kim Zolziak when he moved to Atlanta, he used to play football for a number of different teams. And their meet cute was captured on camera on the Bravo TV channel, Real Housewives of Atlanta show where Kim used to be a star. Well, now that beleaguered couple, unfortunately is dealing with a much different and a supremely sadder reality, their real life. She has emptied shelves and purses. You've taken all my bags and, and uh, so yes, I have. she has taken yep. these. She's you, about to take these offside. All my Here bags. she yeah. is. Yep, combative and, and no. just like no. how she loves to do. Okay. And if you do that, we'll wait. Okay. And we'll In Atlanta, money and class do give you power. So many who followed this case, they realize they've watched it. They know Kim and Croy's mansion was under threat of foreclosure. Each of them have been hurling nasty insults and accusations at one another. Ariana has even come against her mom for posting some clickbait type of um, articles and videos, almost insinuating that Croy had died and he hadn't. You guys, I had about a damn heart attack when I went on my, when I went on my Instagram. I, I physically don't have any fucking words. Like what? What? The DMs that I'm getting as well, like before I even saw the story, and I'm like, yeah, that. What? It, what would you do in this situation? Secondhand embarrassment stays through the roof. Um, let's see what's coming next week. Um, I love you, but I just, like, my heart, like, tugging, like, no! The fuck? And he has not. The public is very interested in this couple's plight. Kim and Croy grew so famous as a couple that Bravo gave them their own spinoff show, Don't Be Tardy. So of course, when I learned about a new motions hearing that was scheduled for Wednesday, October 16th, starting at 9 a.m., I wanted to watch it. I wanted to be able to bring it to you guys, you guys who have been watching so many videos about this couple on my channel over the past year. So I wanted to do everything I was supposed to do in order to legally record 
the divorce hearing so I could give it to you guys. I'm just going to do it. You guys are right. Like, everybody's right. I'm going to end up dead if not. Like, it's that crazy. Him, when I'm recording, like, voice notes. Like, yesterday, that's why he grabbed my phone. I'm recording, like, voice notes. How do you record somebody hitting you? How would I ever do that? You know why? We have 55 cameras. They're all off. You want to know why? Because of what he does to me. You can f***ing ask anybody. Yeah, Every yeah, camera's off in this house. Well, hopefully you understand that if you take your phone. Or if you put your hands on her, or if you f***ing, whatever you would call this, like... Bullying or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Like you pop your chest up and you and you push me around. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you. I don't know what to say that is. Right? What you know? That's what that's his, you. That's like his famous like thing that he does. And like what? You f***ing scared? You f***ing scared? What are you gonna do? Like this is what he does. I'm in jail. Privacy. I don't trust her. Using to. She's, she's a severe narcissist. There's something down there, a request for media access in the Superior Court. You can submit a Rule 22 request to the Public Information Officer in Fulton County, and you have to submit that request at least 24 hours in advance, business hours before the hearing. Even though this was a Zoom hearing online, Judge Shermella J. Williams would only consider approving my Rule 22 if I drove or flew all the way from Ohio good sound effects to Atlanta just to record a screen. They were on Zoom, you know. So I wrote, I thought there was a misunderstanding. I wrote, I was requesting permission to record the Zosiac Zoom hearing via the web on October 16th. So their senior staff attorney wrote to me, yes, I understand which hearing you want to record. If you wish to record the proceedings, you must do so in person in our courtroom in order to record it. So the location of Croy versus Kim, the latest hearing was in courtroom 4A in Georgia, and I did not end up going all the way down there for a hearing that I didn't even know, I didn't even know if it would happen. As court cases go, they're always being continued or, you know, canceled, pushed back, late. You don't know what's going to happen. So am I supposed to try and come up with a thousand dollars or more to buy a plane ticket, hotel rooms, car rentals, or drive all the way down there only for Kim not to show up in the Zoom hearing in a previous divorce hearing like she did because she was working flying back from Columbia. Plus, after I submitted this Rule 22, one of the lawyers objected to my request, probably Kim's lawyer. It was written to me, there's been an objection to your Rule 22 request. The court will hold a hearing on this objection on October 16th at 9 a.m. in courtroom 4A, which is the same day as the hearing you are requesting to record. Uh, <laughs> I'm so good. I'm so good. They gave me that location of their Atlanta courtroom. Please be on time. Failure to appear at the appointed time may result in a dismissal of my Rule 22 request. Uh, you cannot go in my home. Well, actually, we, we can. It's an investigation. No, it's a, so, no, you, no. That's, right. So you can step over there. There is no power trouble. I'm simply exercising hey, my rights. So I wrote, I've received this email. I'm sorry, but my rule 22 was to obtain permission to record the hearing, which is broadcast via Zoom, like right here on my MacBook in Ohio. <laughs> you know, hit screen record. That's what I'm asking. Since I live in Ohio, not Atlanta, and will not be able to attend in person, as I understand it, I have automatically been denied permission to record via Zoom. Is that correct? Is that a law for every single Fulton County hearing? Media cannot record any Zoom hearings? I was getting confused. I really wanted to know. I wrote, I usually look for the do not record, the do not record and other similar wording on judges' YouTube channels or in Zoom hearings, you know, on, on court websites. You can tell if they're like, do not record. You can tell when you're not supposed to record. He's like, get out, get out. I want to take a shower. But when he locks me out and I can't get back in. And bullying me this body like this. Like, like pushing me into the the wall in the shower. Was that today? No. Last night I finally said, next time he does something to me, I'm calling the police. I've had enough. So I think he tapped. And he, he heard that? Yes, I'm okay. sure. He has like a. Oh, come look at the door. Come here. Look at the door. Look what he did. He kicked off the door. Like what, a month or three weeks ago? He repaired it. He kicked the whole door in. This lock goes into the wall. Into yeah. this. Into the, he kicked the lid. Saturday, Sunday. I love you so much crying, like doing all this bullshit. Walked in the, in the bathroom after I had gotten the kids to bed, shut up the house, turned the lights off. I said, Would you please leave so I can shower? Nope. 
What was she doing in the bathroom? Sitting there. And she had no reason to be. She's on the phone. phone. She's talking on the phone to somebody. He's so, been super calm. He's been on the phone with. I don't even know who. I talked to a lawyer for three hours. Yeah. That's exactly why this is happening. I talked to a lawyer today. Did he keep you from leaving him. the bathroom? Just so I'm sorry. I know it's so inappropriate, but I'm just. Crazy. I have my doctor here. My f***ing chiropractor. He's adjusting me. My husband's. What was this last week? Screaming. F*** you! My chiropractor just said to me yesterday. I had to go to his office. And something's like very wrong with me. Okay. Did she put her hands on you at all, or did you put her hands? There's no pushing or anything. Absolutely not. No, um, did anybody? Does anybody force to stay into in a room? Absolutely not. Not at all. No, I was okay. asking her to leave. Okay. So I'm, I'm, all I'm going to say is that I, I have put up with more than any human being should have ever put up with. She could probably say the same thing as well. From hearings broadcast all across the United States to figure out which ones I'm allowed to record and which ones I can. So I wrote, therefore, I guess my Rule 22 can be dismissed. Thank you. And the senior staff attorney wrote, thank you for your quick response. It is the order of this court, Judge Williams, that any recording, if granted, must be done in person. Each judge is different. So it depends on the judge. So they would let the court know that my request has been withdrawn. So I did try and do things the correct way. I still ended up attending the hearing. I'll tell you about that in a second. But at least I did try and do things the correct way, the legal way. Unlike the people today who got kicked out of the Richard Allen hearing in Indiana, Thank God I didn't drive over there either. According to the YouTuber JLR Investigates, he's over there now, boots on the ground. Some people were surreptitiously trying to record the hearing or opening statements or whatever they did today with their phone. Indiana does allow recording in courtrooms, but only with a judge's authorization. So this judge obviously did not authorize anyone to record. And to tell you the truth, I understand it. This was a horrible, heinous case. We want the victims, Abby and Libby, to get their justice young girls, beautiful girls, killed horrifically. That type of court case, I do understand no recording. They are young victims, horrible. You don't want those crime scene photos out. I understand that. But I do believe in other trials, it is sad when we have to rely on just a reporter's notes handwritten notes or what they observe through their point of view and they could be totally skewed or they could get something wrong instead of actually us having the audio and video to specific trials. And that's why I hate federal trials too. They can't be recorded, they can't be streamed. They can't be streamed live from the courtroom. So we have to put up with these crazy courtroom sketches. I mean, thank God for the courtroom artists, but come on, some of them come out like that doesn't really tell me what Puff Daddy looked like or what his expressions were. You know, we're so used to visually looking at people and seeing what's going on. Thank God, though, for America. At least they give us a lot more access than some countries. It's like no access. So I ended up logging on to Kim and Croy's hearing Wednesday morning, but it did not go as planned. More on that in a second, but let me tell you the state of affairs. According to TMZ, Kim and Croy's divorce keeps getting nastier and now she's claiming that he's been spying on her in her own personal space in the house. Kim's attorneys filed a motion last Wednesday, October 9th, making the allegation and she's asking the judge to order Croy to return her personal possessions, according to online court records seen by TMZ. So I don't know how TMZ obtained this motion because I looked on Fulton County Court. It is clearly marked hidden on the court's website. So either they have some kind of special access or special permission. Are they paying off somebody to leak stuff to them? We know sometimes that's how TMZ gets a lot of their stuff. The motions are sealed, TMZ says, but sources familiar with the situation tell TMZ Kim's firing off about Croy allegedly surveilling her within their home, including one incident where Kim says there's photos of Croy passed out in her closet after spying on her. So sad. So TMZ went over the rules of the judge ordering who could occupy what space. Kim is supposed to be in the basement in the nanny suite while 
Croy gets the master bedroom, but Kim is saying that hasn't stopped Croy, with her alleging he went down into her private space while she was gone and took all the security cams she set up to stop him from intruding on her space. So he's down there, I guess, taking away the cameras, according to Kim. This is really getting nastier. Now, in previous videos, like I showed you, even though Croy was supposed to be in the master bedroom, sleeping on that big $20,000 bed, Kim was in the master bedroom. She was taking all the blankets and having the officers hold her pillows and hold her stuff and act like her little errand boys and stuff and girls. I take the heavy things. I have like, you take my pillow for me, that would be really yeah. amazing. Try it here. Or unless she goes and and admits herself somewhere, there ain't nothing we can do. Well, I need to know what's going on because your kid's called, so I need to know what's going on. I think I saw my dad here, my mom, yes. one time. So it didn't turn physical because your kids, I guess, called. I'll say no because it doesn't matter if it does anyways. Apparently I found that out the last time y'all were here, so. Okay, well you stay with him. Or do you have a place to go tonight? Oh, I don't care. I'll, yeah, I'll go get a hotel room. I had to last week and last week as well. Okay. My dad was like covering her mouth because she couldn't. She was there's, like, there's no, there's no reason. You guys don't even need to be here. This is trauma drama. So you're not willing to go and get a place or anything like that again tonight? I can't. Okay. All right, Kimberly, here's what we're going to do. Because I'm not going to play the, like the game we did last time, okay? Yeah. You're going to leave, correct? Yeah. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. There's a way to get in the house from here, correct? Yeah. Officer Ross is going to go with you. Okay. You're going to go grab whatever you want. Okay. We're going to keep Coy out front. Okay. Go grab your debit card. Go yeah, get whatever you want. Okay. Go grab your debit card, wherever you want. I want you to get in your car, and while we're here, you're going to leave while we're still here. Okay, you got it. So go with Officer Ross. I have my daughter's car trying to get her car, but she's back. Nope, that's fine. Just go with Officer Ross. We're going to do that. By the way, there's a whole closet downstairs. I don't know that. And like I told Corey, obviously, last time, the whole property thing, you guys got to take that up with your lawyers. I know, I, but again, like I told you, you, you still got to take it up with your lawyers. Okay. She said she was grabbing something. Was it his birthday recently? Yeah. It's November. Just hold up. Hold up. Oh, I don't need to. Just hold up. Hold up. I don't need to hold up. You do. I don't even need to be here. Well, we got called, so Nobody we're here right now. No, oh, we got called. Nobody called you. You can check the records if you want, but I'm telling you right now, we were called. Hang on, hang on. Do what we need to do here. I'm going to be outside. You're fine. No, you need to be there. You need to stay right here. I'll be outside. Be fine, guys. I'll be outside with your dad. It's fine. Be fine. All right, hang on. Croy. 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 You do not have okay. to be in my house. Don't stand before you get put in cuffs. We're here. Come on. You're about to get bit. Because here's the thing. Croy. Here's the thing. Sir, I Keep did not going. give you authorization to be in my home. You're no, no. Get put, Corey, listen to me very I quick. did not give you authorization. I know Corey, my rights. Stop, Corey, I you know my rights. Okay, then stop talking if you know your rights. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you your rights. I'm going to inform you of your rights. We're here for a lawful reason. Go with him. All right, come on, Corey. I was, not, I was not clear what was going on. Now I am. Come on, let's go. We're going to need to step outside. No, I'm not going to leave him with my children. Okay, well, my officers and they got body cams on. No. They'll be fine. No. So... Mm -hmm. Can we all leave the home or no? Not yet. Until he talks to her. So we can't Once. stand outside? We can stand outside if okay, you want. Cool. So. Sir, do you have any marks on you or anything? For anybody hitting you? Matter if I do. Well, you mind if I just look real quick? If somebody were to hit you today, where would they have hit you? Sounds like we're done. Any questions for us? Anytime. So I know it's hard to remember. Um, 
we can't control when we come out here, especially when somebody calls. If you want us out of here quicker, just let us do our job. That way we can get out of here a lot faster. That's all I can say. All right. At least according to TMZ, Kim isn't trying to kick Croy out. She was expecting Croy to return whatever personal items he took. We know she's been fighting over. The body cams opened up with her like getting all the purses and whatever out of the home because she thought she said Croy was grabbing stuff and taking them and she thought he was selling them. He thought she was selling stuff. He's saying that he doesn't really have the means to go anywhere right now. So if you do, it might be helpful, but you're probably worried about all your stuff being left behind. The problem, if, especially if he's liquidating stuff, you need to get some people over here, hire some people, and get your stuff on that if that's the case. I mean, I'm, you know I'm not a lawyer. I can't offer you legal advice. I'm just telling you. Come on, get out of here, all of it. Because if you're worried about it being liquidated or taken from yeah, you, then because if he allows it to be taken out of this house and he says that's like, then you know it's yours now because it's out of the house. So that car is in the. He took the other car key. To the, to the car out there, like he's just sneaky. I don't have, like, if I spend as much time, if he got a job, how about that? If he got a job, he hasn't had one in seven years, um, then maybe he wouldn't have so much time to sit here in my closet. Like, get a job. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, but, it, it can become petty to where it's like he's taking stuff of yours and you're going I've to the closet and taking stuff. Yeah. I've never taken one so, thing. Look at this closet. I didn't take his guns. I didn't take anything. I can take all of it. That's not who I am. He's mad because I have the rings. Go ahead. should be but okay. I, have, I have the best look. well i'm sure it goes deeper than what we're hearing about today you know obviously but sir you i don't keep up with the tabloids and i don't keep up with any of that nobody stuff, knows so, about this because i right. so i don't know she has emptied shelves and purses you've taken all my bags and, and uh so yes, i have she has taken yep. these she's you, about to take these offside all my here bags. she is yeah. yep. about to intervene with him. So So, Mr. Corey, you can film me if, too if you like. Sure. Um, we sure. can't stop you from filming or anything sure. like that. What I would ask of you, film all you want to, sure. narrate your video all you want to. Just try not to be provocative, like provoking of her, okay? Because, like, I mean, your kids are really right there. All right, man. I know you're upset, man. I, I get it. I'm really not. I just, it's just so sad. It's just a terrible it is, situation. It is sad. It is. Because, um, I mean, you guys have been together for a long time, and it's, I, I understand. Um, do you think that there's any any chance of you guys are ever like reconciling or like figuring well, it out? Or she has to go to rehab. She she has she has to go. She has uh, some significant issues. She has, uh, like I said, uh, two major compulsive behavioral addictions: the gambling and the overspending, uh, probably alcohol abuse, and she has childhood trauma, PTSD, uh, narcissism. And some severe unresolved issues that 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 she is that refused. something that you guys have went to together or you're saying no, knowing her that's so what we you're... tried to go to couples counseling and then what she did is, is use what he said and manipulated it and created false boundaries to continue the abuse right so right. she runs away to stonewall and avoid right. because she quote needs privacy because the counselor said that humans deserve privacy right so it's refusing to resolve problems. Trying to and, use it as an oh, agenda yeah, yeah, for what? Weaponizing right. everything and, and what, what gets her to continue to have control. Uh, and she, she's got control over everything in her entire marriage from, from, I mean everything, absolutely everything. Money and companies and what we do and how we do it and where we go. And, yeah. and uh, it's just a textbook. It's literal textbook. And, and, uh, our older daughter. Have you fought earlier. back against that the entire time, or you just yeah, kind of well, recently have just said, you know, periodically I've had it. in the beginning, you know, and it was it was very minimal. But 
certain things happened that, that she uh, got very upset about, did not handle it uh, appropriately. There was no infidelity or anything like that. I've, I've, I've been a, a, a stand-up husband for, uh, in my opinion, for this entire marriage. And, and there's been times where I have reacted the wrong way to the abuse that I have received. That's part of the growth, though. That's growth. Sure. And uh, so, but, um, yeah, no, that, that process has just, or that, that problem has gotten worse. And, and and I think the the gambling has just melted her brain. It's like it's gone. It's, there's no. Has that been something that's gone on the whole time, or is that a recent thing? So well, so it's 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 easy to, or it's it's not easy, but it's it's much more uh, manageable when you have to go to a physical location to gamble. Right? There's no casinos here in Georgia. You have to go to charity yeah, online. Uh, that's, like, online, yeah. which is illegal, yeah. but. It's, it's... Is that everything? Okay. So it's in my name. Okay. And my daughter's name. Okay. And he has the key, the other key to it. Okay. So how does that work? Croy never returned her personal items, so Kim is asking the court to get involved. This filing would also prevent Croy from touching Kim's stuff going forward, including personal notes Kim says that Croy may have already gotten his hands on. So it's the same kind of claim she filed when Kim has been alleging that Croy has stolen her phone and her other personal belongings in January, May. We've watched a lot of these videos. Yeah, TMZ says the issue has been brewing for a while and cops were called to their home back in May where Kim is claiming Croy snatched her cell phone, locked himself in the master bedroom. There's been so many body cams, it's hard to remember what's what. Kim is like, oh yeah, we just did it two weeks ago, but now we're fighting and he, and at one point Croy would never come out of the bedroom and other points he did and everybody remembers the time where he came out, he was outside and he's like, she's having other men when he blew his stack. Her inability to solve problems. Okay, or address or over. do anything. Come over here. Why? Because I want to talk to you away from her. I don't want her to start screaming at you and, and have a whole it's, argument. It's nothing but an act. It's all a bunch of bullshit. What? What is? Everything she does. Okay, what does she do tonight? Everything. Everything, dude. I, I can't, I'm not going to do this. Because this right here does nothing but fuel her bullshit. I'm not doing this. This is narcissistic behavior. I'm not doing this. I'm just trying to figure out what the There's is. nothing to do. You shouldn't even be here. Who it called was, you? Your kids. Who? What kid? You have kids? I don't know. Whoever's in the house. So He's what, been outside what, this whole time. What, 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 what was the argument about? Our life! What, our life! Okay, and it's so f***ing destroyed! Why, why is it getting so heated? Because our life is destroyed! What don't you understand? There's no money. There's no house. She wants, we're, we're getting divorced one day and we're not the next. Okay. She's f***ing other men. What do you want? Just calm down. Calm down, but I don't have a f***ing life. And I don't have somebody who won't listen to me. Calm down. Oh, calm down. You want to live this mother no. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have lasted calm for down. a year. You wouldn't have lasted a day in this f***ing house. I told you, we're arguing because of our f***ing life and you don't even need to be here. You're still asking questions. I don't want to f***ing answer them. All right, well, can you just have a seat then? No, I don't need to. Yeah, you do. You need to calm hold down. Hold up. Hold up. I don't need to hold up. You guys don't even need to be here. Well, we got called. Nobody right. called you. We got called. Nobody called you. Nobody called you. I'm going to go talk to uh, Ms. Spearman. Kim and Croy have this court order saying they need to stick to their parts of the house, but Croy has alleged he doesn't have Kim's phone. TMZ reached out to Kim and Croy's camp and they didn't hear back, but I saw them face to face just as sure as I'm looking at myself in my iPhone 14 Pro Max right now on cinematic mode. <laughs> Wednesday. What happened on Wednesday when I logged into Zoom? The judge immediately saw me. You know how your label on Zoom, it came up as Plunder LLC, my company name. 
So she saw me and she immediately forced me to cam up to get on camera. <laughs> She's like, you have to turn your camera on, Miss Plunder. <laughs> Everybody started calling me Miss Plunder. I thought that was kind of funny. Thank God I had on clothes. It was 9 a.m., but I hadn't even brushed my teeth yet. No makeup. I guess my hair, thank God, was halfway decent. But I wasn't turning on all these lights. I was kind of sitting in the shadows. So I went on camera. I'm grateful that judge even let me in the Zoom hearing. I was the only media person there. It's the same thing that a different judge in Fulton County forced us to do on the divorce hearing of Shirley Strawberry versus Ernest Nesto Williams Jr. Shirley is a popular co-host. She works with Steve Harvey. That's how she's more well known. So this judge forced us to cam up the same thing. I was like, whoa, this is new. You know, usually us journalists can, or reporters or whomever, people, the public sometimes, you can just watch the court hearings without going on camera. They don't need to see your face. But more on that mealy in a bit too. Judge Williams in the Kim and Croy case verified that I withdrew my Rule 22. I said yes because as I understand it, I would have only been allowed to record if I was actually present in the courtroom. I said something like that, out of body experience. I'm like, ah. Oh. The judge confirmed it and she reiterated, there's no audio and no video recording of the hearing. And then that's when she threatened me with contempt of court which in some cases comes with jail time. She said, because if any audio or video gets out, we'll know it's from you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I am not recording. And I did not, I recorded no audio, no video. I said, thank you, your honor. I was very polite and tactful. But as the hearing went on, I started to get like, a little bit, whoa, I realized, look, any of these other participants here could have been recording the hearing. And what if they put it out? That's not me putting it out. Anyway. Kim was there. She was looking pretty, wearing white. It looked like she was in her home, a nice, you know, background. She was sitting at a desk or a countertop or something. Croy was there, not next to her, in a separate location. Maybe he was, you know, in his car. His background was blurred. He had a signature beard. Maybe he was sitting in a car or by a window. You can't tell with the background blurred, but every once in a while he would just turn and look out the window so wistfully. Sadness prevailed. I sat there and prayed for this couple, this fractured family. They were like real human beings before me, and I'm sure they probably weren't too happy with me. You know, Miss Plunder, <laughs> all these body cam videos, you know, I'm sure Croy wouldn't want them out. And I'm sure Kim didn't want them out every time. She wanted to be able to call the officers. They both wanted to be able to call the officers and use the officers as their standbys while they fought over property and, you know, treated the officers like marriage counselors and everything. I'm sure they didn't want that, but that's what happened. And they were calling them. And so their body cams were activated. And that's just the laws of our country. You know, it's money citizens are paying for the body cams and the officers salaries and so when they keep getting called and they show up it's public record that's how i was able to obtain the body cam footage but apparently kim might want to go by the name zolziak because the judge kept correcting herself when judge williams would say miss beerman she'd go no miss zolziak so i'm wondering if kim said i want to go back zolziak now i'm not sure kim's attorneys the levine smith snyder and coburn law firm they were there it was all in all maybe about 12 people there? I don't know who was behind the scenes. There was Kim, Croy, me, uh, two lawyers from the Snyder firm, Croy's lawyers, and maybe it was about 10 people. There were other windows open, but people were not on screen. They didn't have to get on screen. Maybe they were just like court officials, court reporters, what have you. Maybe about 10 people. But one of Kim's attorneys, this woman, she even mentioned me in her argument saying something about people digging for documents and like Miss Plunder. And she <laughs> motioned with a wave of her hand and the judge, thank God for her, she shut that down real quick. Judge Williams was like, that is not what I ask. She must have told the lawyers that statement, that phrase at least 10 times because they kept rambling on about stuff that she didn't ask. And Croy's lawyers were there as well as other court reporters, officials, and of course, Judge Williams was in the courtroom and you could see others in the courtroom too, other people, just a few. Some were off screen though. They were also waiting for their divorces. So the judge was admonishing Kim and Croy's lawyers as they wasted time arguing. You know, they're getting billable hours, so I'm sure they wouldn't mind dragging this divorce out until there's not a red cent left. The judge admonished Kim and Croy's lawyers because, 
you know, it was going on and on. The hearing was only scheduled for 30 minutes, but it was 9.35 already. They were still arguing. I've got other couples that want to get divorced, the judge told them. And she was like, you all want to get divorced, right? She was talking to the people in the courtroom. But Kim was like, raised her hand and she was like, I want to get divorced, I could hear her say. But Croy, unfortunately, he just remained quiet, I believed, and looked out the window. It was just sadness. They were not like, to me, that I wasn't starstruck. I was just kind of angry angry about the way the whole thing was playing out and getting threatened with contempt of court when I'm just trying to do a job as, you know, a media person trying to bring the correct news to YouTube viewers. So I wasn't starstruck. And plus they were just, it was just sad. You know, you just hate to see a family with children break up, especially, you know, some of their children are still very young. So the lawyers were arguing over so much stuff. Perhaps the respondents requests for supplementation pursuant to whatever law and other stuff. I didn't always understand what was going on because the TMZ report just came out. I didn't see that TMZ report Wednesday and the freaking motion is sealed anyway. So I don't know how TMC got it. So Wednesday, I'm like, I don't really know what's going on here. They were arguing so much. Judge Williams told them to go into a breakout room. And there I sat just feeling kind of upset, angry, defeated, admonished, like this horrible interloper for trying to accurately report this celebrity news that's crossed into true crime, trying to bring you guys the truth. You always hear fake news, fake news. So we're trying to get the true news. So I did what I could. I did what I can do from memory. I took a few notes. I was so paranoid this judge would think I was recording that I was holding my phone off screen just to take notes in Google Docs. I didn't even record the audio for my use only, like reporters have done in the past, not to rebroadcast it, but just to listen to our own recording just to get the quotes correct. I didn't even do that. So all I got was this. Croy's attorney, Ryan Proctor, says they've got nothing from Kim Behrman. They're missing all this discovery. There's $15,000 in legal fees that Croy wants Kim to pay. Now I did hear Kim recently deposited $80,000 into her account. I wonder if that's from the surreal life or whatever. I don't know what that's from. She is working. However, one lawyer claimed that Kim says she has a million dollars in credit card debt. So they were just going on and on about proof this. I need this. No, I need that. No, I ask you and I didn't file this because this, it was just or whatever. That's all I got before they went into the breakout room. So I just left the Zoom hearing. I called my sister and I didn't go back. I was like, I'd rather talk to my sister. We talk every morning. It felt like another defeat in a way because here I am. We spend hours and hours behind the scene and days and days to work to bring you guys the stuff that you really want to see. Like I always say, you vote with your views. Some people, you know, I might cover this case. I might cover some obscure case, barely gets any views, barely gets any interest. So I'm like, okay. I pay attention to what people want because it's not what they say. I learned a long time ago. It's what they click on. They might tell you, I'm not interested in Kim and Croy, but the numbers prove otherwise. So if there's one thing that nearly 1 million views that these 15 videos have collected in nearly one year since I published the first body cam video about this couple on Saturday, October 28, 2023, is that you are very interested in the Beerman Zolziak family. So in the Zoom hearing, they made me feel like I was doing something so wrong or something so bad. I literally had to ask Google, celebrity divorce court hearings, public or private? They were treating me like I was there trying to steal something or, you know, I don't know. Celebrity divorce court hearings are usually public because legal filings and court cases are part of the public record. No wonder Stefan Stearns the other day when his lawyer is an expert and FOIA requests, I see you have to really dig in and fight to just for the right, not to party, but to just have the laws of the land upheld, like the right to witness court hearings. Nothing sinister, nothing involving children that will invade their privacy or make more of a victim out of them. Nothing like that. I just mean public court hearings. What is happening? Is there body cam footage, a case, a crime? Is someone arrested? Is there a divorce hearing from a popular couple who are public figures? But where is the line drawn? How do we balance balance public interest versus personal privacy from celebrities who were fine with collecting checks from you know bravo and other places to show the world their lives via those fake reality tv shows and sell their wares to fans you know they were fine with us watching then 
but now. Ironically, it'll be election day when these two are due back in court. That's on the docket so far. Tuesday, November 5th and Wednesday, November 6th, Kim and Croy should be back in Fulton County for a special set hearing. Two days in person, 9 a.m. start time in, in front of Judge Williams in courtroom 4A. Will I put in another Rule 22 and make my way all the way to Atlanta to film it? Probably not. I'll be up here voting. There are already fine journalists in Atlanta like Dennis Byron with Hip Hop Inquirer. He perhaps could make it. He's great. He's filmed presidents. He's very popular. He, he calls his camera Big Bertha like he has all this great equipment. He goes live. He's great. There's other great YouTubers like Attorney Pam Esquire, The Law Intellect. She does hop on a plane and she can even sleep on a plane. I don't like flying. She travels to Atlanta often to cover various cases. There's Real Talk Bougie and Nyla La, just some great YouTubers in the area. Maybe they can make it there. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully someone's there. Probably won't be me. <laughs> because this is another thing. Some of us are people who covered the Nesto Williams trial, this case, and he has many different cases. He's been accused of bigamy, but some of us were the target of his lawyer not too long ago who said our government names in open court and told the judge we were lying about being in the media. Next one is Plunder, P-O-U-N-D-E-R-L-L-C. The real name is Paula Neil Mooney, P-A-U-L-A. Okay, he did say Miss Paula. M-O-O-N-E-Y. Miss Mooney said um, improperly that she was part of the media and she's actually a video creator with LinkedIn. Huh? It's crazy. Some of us had just logged on to this other Fulton County hearing. You know, the judge is like, cam up. And that was the first time a judge is like, get on camera. I'm like, what is this? I mean, we got on camera. Little did we know later the spies, I guess, are writing down our names and telling the judge, you know, because the judge is like, why are you here? I guess he wanted to know, are you public? Are you media? And I'm like, media, you know, we're media. This Nesto man who was married to Shirley Strawberry, he has a big Rico case coming up. He has all this stuff coming up. His lawyer is claiming, oh, these people lied and said we were media. Well, we are media. This attorney neglected to realize the fact that us true crime YouTubers are indeed modern day, non-traditional media. That's what we are. Some of us putting in just as much time or even more than traditional media sources. I mean, look at JLR Investigates. Everywhere I turn, he's like, I'm in California. I'm in Memphis. I'm in Florida. He's in the middle of a hurricane. I mean, he's great. He's boots on the ground, literally, him and Magnolia. They go a lot of places. Therefore, the way the media can be made to feel like the enemy is disheartening. Oh, sometimes it's great. It works. Like today, the docket, a YouTuber and I, we sat through this long Utah WebEx waiting for this Jennifer Gledhill hearing. She's a woman charged in the murder of her husband. He's a military man after he discovered her affair. It's like her parents seems like they helped her with the cleanup and she shot her husband in the head. They haven't found his body yet. And she went to her boyfriend, her affair partner, and confessed all this stuff to him. Thank God he told the cops. He turned on her. He rolled on her. He was getting screenshots of her text messages before as she was actively deleting them and he recorded stuff but the docket and i have sat through various cases today for about an hour before realizing that jennifer woman's hearing has been moved to monday so thank god i didn't fly all the way out to utah for that that's coming more is coming next week stay tuned so i realized that some court proceedings are not permitted for us to record not necessarily because they're about privacy i understand the ones that involve children or you know assaults in certain ways it's not appropriate but sometimes it's just because the courts probably want you to pay their exorbitant fees for the same audio footage i don't even know if we could pay for the video footage if they even provide it some only provide it to parties of the case but judge williams again she told me I had to be on screen the whole time during Kim and Croy's divorce hearings and, you know, act as if I had just walked into her courtroom in person. So if I had walked into her courtroom, I'd be sitting there the whole time. Made sense to me. So what happened at the end of Kim and Croy's hearing? I don't know because I didn't sit there and wait while they were off in a breakout room. Hopefully Kim and Croy, if they can't miraculously save their marriage, I was still praying for it to be saved. I really, I don't know. I kind of like them together and I don't know. 
But hopefully if they can't, they'll get away from each other and just be able to co-parent safely. In the meantime, I'll keep putting these FOIA requests in and getting videos. Sometimes I'm told a lot because I like new cases. I prefer new cases where, you know, it's not the same old. Sometimes I go back, but it's not the same old cases where like a person's covering the Scott Peterson trial or the Scott Peterson or whatever, John Bonet case, like something that is from years ago. I know there's a place for that, but I like the new cases. And a lot of times I'm told due to this being an open investigation, the attached material will be the only material released at this time. That's what I was told by Bear County officials. So I was looking into that Suzanne Simpson. Unfortunately, she hasn't been found yet as of this recording. Her husband has been arrested, Brad Simpson. He's been arrested. So they gave me his mugshot and uh, that's about it. Some other paperwork, but of course not his interviews. Well, he didn't show up for an interview. Maybe the 911 calls and stuff will eventually get. But such is the life of a reporter. Does it go too far sometimes? Yes, I guess so. TMZ took it too far recently by publishing photos of Liam Payne's arm and, you know, his tattoos after he had jumped to his death recently. They ended up unpublishing those photos. They didn't publish photos of him laying there on the ground, but just parts of his body. And they took it down. We have to be tactful, sensitive, and mostly wanting to do this job and pass on the facts. And that's why another reason I watermark almost everything lately when I can, audio and visually watermark. So who wants to work hours and hours and hours behind the scene and for days? Like that's why I'm disappearing. I, you know, some people, they're able to put out more stuff. And I like to bring you guys original stuff you have never seen. I don't mind people reacting to my stuff. You know, I like reaction videos too. But what purpose is it if we're working hours and hours and hours behind the scenes and sometimes we're paying a lot of money to bring you guys like PDFs, videos, body cams, all Kim and Croy's I paid. I got invoices for all of those body cam videos you've seen. You know, I got the invoices. TMZ might just show you two minutes of it, but I realize people want to see like the whole hour and a half or whatever. I pay a lot of money to bring you guys that footage just like other YouTubers do. So that's why it's not okay, you know, for another bigger YouTuber to come along and like, oh, what, have you been sitting by the pool all day or something? And oh, gee, here's a video like that's taken me three days worth of work to obtain or five days or months or what have you. Oh, let me just take theirs and uh, pretend that it's mine. No, that's the part I don't like. That's why I watermark everything. I don't mind people reacting to it. That's fine because then if they're automatically giving me credit or least not lying to their viewers about where they got it. Some bigger YouTubers, few of them this year, it's pretty sad. You know, just take the original footage from my Patreon. That was a big learning lesson for me. I'm telling you, just take it, download it, pretend that they got it from police, pretend they did all the work that I actually did behind the scenes, hours and hours and hours. And you know, the docket does so much work. He's the one that told me about this Jennifer Gledhill case. That's why we were going back and forth today. He sent me the info and then we were looking for the trial and then we were going back and forth and then I contacted someone to get permission to record. And of course I copied him on all that info because it's like more of a symbiotic relationship. He's giving me this info and I'm like, oh cool. And then I'm sending him other info. Like, oh, I found out this. Okay, you found out this. Other YouTubers, some of them are out there like, oh, you did all that 50 hours worth of work okay i'm gonna take it and guess what i'm presenting it to my viewers with a lie guys look at what my researcher found that's the part that really gets on my nerves that's the part that's really disheartening watching their viewers oh you're so great here you did all this work great no you didn't so i don't like slaving away <laughs> I want to strive to bring you guys stuff. You don't even have to pay for it. You know, it's here free on YouTube for the price of paying for ads. You know, so one person called it, oh, I think it's kind of crass to have to put an audio watermark like that on because another YouTuber was playing it and didn't even, I don't think gave me credit that particular time, but whatever. That's why my audio watermark is there. And it's like you hear the plunder true crime and some people are like, oh, I think that's crass. Yeah, too bad. I had to do it because all this work behind the scenes I'm striving to bring you guys it's for justice for the victims and unfortunately some other bigger youtubers or smaller too are there to just grab what they can off of YouTube make a name for themselves by lying to you guys I'm gonna end up telling you I just tell you where I got it and do it in a respectful way if I get it from whomever the credit is right there 
in the first comment. So for the folks who think they should be given away everything for free, I'm like, in the United States, slavery ended on December 6th, 1865. <laughs> Some people don't understand the role of a YouTuber, a reporter, what have you, all this stuff. Now, of course, no matter what, even if it's not monetized, YouTube is going to throw ads on our videos no matter what. But I don't know who could afford to, unless you're just a millionaire already, which I'm not, like, unless a person can afford to just sit there and work, 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 you know, altruistically getting paid nothing, how would they eat? You know, how would they live? How would they pay their mortgage? I don't know. Work all 50 hour weeks or what have you, present it to people for free. Oh, we do it anyway on YouTube, but never charge anything. And how would they even pay for this stuff? to begin with. That's my rant. There's a reason why we spend all this time, we spend money, we spend effort, we dig into these cases to bring you the truth. And I don't feel like we should be berated for it. I don't know what will happen to those people in Delphi who were trying to sneak, you know, in that uh, trial. I know they got kicked out according to JLR. Will they be brought in contempt of court? Will they have to pay fines or fees? Will they get any jail time? Other people are in the comments like, you should have brought a spy pen or the, you know, Google glasses. I really wish I had those glasses where you can just record stuff and they won't know, but I think they're really watching out for folks. I understand in certain trials, yeah, Abby and Libby need their respect. They need justice as victims. They don't need any crime scene photos leaking. They don't need that kind of stuff. But we do need court proceedings to be more open in a way that's still safe for any witnesses or still in a way that still gives the victims their dignity. Now, I know it depends on the particular court case, but it's kind of like I don't like the closed off feel of I don't want to have to rely on what a reporter said happened in Diddy's trial today or, you know, whenever he goes to trial. That's why I like when I can recording for you, getting the original interviews, getting the original documents, and then going over it. I hope all of that rambling makes sense, but that's what I had to get off my chest and tell you guys what the heck I'm doing. You know, if I'm gone for a few days, I'm literally behind the scenes tracking down public information officers, records requests, all this stuff that I realize some other people just don't want to do because I get so many questions like, how did you get that? Or how did you get this document? How'd you get that document? And for a while, I was just sending them off to people, you know, in the docket, I'm sure he sends them off to people, different people. But after a while, it's kind of sad to me because it's not symbiotic. I got some of the same people who are like, oh, give me this document. Give me that document. Give me this document. And it's kind of like, you know what I mean? Whereas the docket will freely give and I'm giving him stuff too. Like, okay, I found this. I found that. Or when it's people out there like that who kind of have your back or, you know, you're able to give and get from, it feels like you're less being used. Other people are just gimme, gimme, gimme. And I'm going to present this as if I just worked 10 hours to go get it to my viewers and beg for super chats and beg for buy me a coffees and all that. Nothing wrong with that if they really worked hard. That's what I kind of feel. Well, if it's so freaking easy, go get it on your own. You know, if it's so easy, all this stuff we've obtained and it should just be out there for free and you go see what we have to go through in order to get it. I guess that's my rant and <laughs> that's why I had to really get this off my heart and explain to you guys the process. So today, unfortunately, I can't bring you any screenshots, any recordings. I can't bring you any audio unless I purchase it from the court, which I can look into to see if that's allowed. If it's allowed, if the judge says it's okay, maybe I can look into purchasing any audio directly from the court and see if it can be rebroadcast. I don't know if the law allows that. I like to stick to what the law allows in court cases. And I don't want to just, you know, pull up stuff that everyone's pulling up and everyone's giving you. We don't need three billion Diddy videos, you know, which is fine. Everyone has their own unique perspective, but I want to give you guys unique things that, you know, we've worked hard to literally dig up ourselves and uh, show you guys accurately because it seems like that's what you want. You want the body cams. You want the court hearings. So that's my rant for today. I hope it all makes sense. Again, thank you guys for always being here. First Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I like that, at the sound of the last trumpet call. I wonder how it'll be, how it'll sound, how loud. For a trumpet will sound, and the dead who believed in Christ will be raised imperishable, 
and we will be completely changed, wondrously transformed. Boy, don't we look forward to that day. Those of us who believe in Christ, whoop, there we go, for we don't have to deal with all these earthly happenings anymore. But thank you so much for watching my rant and stay tuned. More stuff is coming next week. As you can see, I'm digging into a variety of cases. It's just we have to wait and wait and wait. Some I'm waiting like a year to get the body cam for, you know, going back and forth and forth and forth for this one particular California case. And when they finally send me that after bugging them and following up after one year, yes, I'm going to watermark it because you can't wait for a whole year and work, work, work on something and get it. And then some other YouTuber is like, hey guys, look what I have for you. It's just sad. It's just really sad where people think, I don't know, that's the way to go. But thank you so much again for always watching and sticking with me. And we'll see what I can find. What else on the Kim and Croy case, on their daughter Ariana's case, much more body cam, different cases, court cases, documents, everything on the way. Stay tuned.